All right, and welcome back to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. I am Raul. This time around, we're going to be doing a quick review of our Dofer A172 series and then jumping in and kind of seeing how you can use this um, in a typical type patch situation um, and get some better results sometimes out of the A172. So in the previous segments, we've covered everything from basics to uh, how this module behaves by processing sub-audio rate signals into it. Uh, we've done a good amount of audio rate processing. Uh, and then we combined the two in the last, uh, not the last video, but the last couple of videos back, um, audio rate and sub-audio rate. Uh, in the last video, we were actually doing a short comparison of ring modulation with the A172 processing, just kind of seeing how two different types of processing modules um, can sound in some ways similar and then in some ways different. Uh, for this last segment, I thought we would kind of put this maybe in a little better context um, and then also show you how to get some better results out of it, um, your A172. Uh, if you look up to the top, I have a kind of processing section up here that we're going to be using a little bit of. Um, over here, I have an A183-2 offset attenuator. Um, and then over here, I also have an A167. I'm not entirely sure how many of these modules we're going to use here, uh, but I thought it would be interesting to kind of try out some of the adjustment uh, suggestions that are in the manual. Now, in the manual, it does recommend a DOE for A123, uh, A129-3, sorry about that, um, module, which is a five-fold offset attenuator. Um, I don't have one of those, so we're going to make do with what we got here. Um, this is kind of a one-channel uh, offset attenuator, and then this is kind of another offset, but not an attenuator. Uh, I also have videos out there on the A183, I think, a little further back, going with the Quantizer series. Uh, and then I think I also incorporated the A167 somewhere back there as well. Um, at any rate, let's go ahead and just jump into the demo. Uh, we're going to be kind of patching up something similar to what we had before, basically audio rate and sub-audio rate together. Um, if you're kind of wondering about this kind of orange cable down here, this is actually coming from a multiple that is in my oscilloscope. Uh, over here on the right. Uh, so we're going to be seeing partly some of it, um, but we're also going to be hearing it down here in our VCA. Um, so let's get this patch going. I'm going to take a saw out and just go right into my input number one of my maximum minimum selector. There we go. And then let's get a sub audio rate signal over there. So let's get the sine wave that we had before and just patch it right into input number two. And now let's see over at our oscilloscope and also here, down here at our VCA, what this sounds like. So I'm gonna patch right here. And if you look at our oscilloscope, that is our current signal right there. Okay. Not bad. Now let's add another audio rate signal to the mix, so to speak. So over here on the right, I have the Dofer A145 LFO, and I have it set to high or audio rate right there. So I'm just going to take a sine wave out from here, and I'm going to go up into my processing section, and I'm going to go right into the input of my offset and attenuator. Here we go. Patching in. And then let me just bring the offset all the way down. So I don't want to do any offset quite yet. I'm going to actually turn this down as well. And now let's take that back out and go down into channel three of our maximum minimum selector. So I'm going to patch right there. There we go. And then down into input number three. There we are. Now let's bring up our attenuator. So in case you're wondering, because you probably saw me bring this all the way up, 
Um, this is actually 100% of our signal down here at the A145 going right into our offset attenuator and then back down into channel 3. And that's what it sounds like right there, as well as over at our oscilloscope, that's what it looks like. So I'm not, in reality, actually affecting the signal at all. It's going 100% up into here, into the A183, and then down into the maximum min. Now, since I have the A183 here in the mix, I can actually now uh, adjust the subtlety of that signal going down into the A172. And I can do it in one of two ways. I can bring down the level going in to the input number three down there. By bringing down my attenuator That's at about, let's see, about 30% right there. Let's just compare that. So that's about 30. Let's hear 100%. Pretty subtle. Let's bring it all the way down to zero. See how we hear absolutely no signal there? So that's where it's just completely closed, and 0% of this is actually going out to input number 3. So now let me bring it back up a little bit, because I want a little bit of that to come in. Maybe about half for what I'm about to do next. Now I can go in and adjust the offset of this signal. So I want to bring it up, and adjust the offset of this signal a little bit. And it basically just gives me another way that I can adjust the subtlety of my patch. And you can hear that it's kind of now transformed. I don't really get as much of a movement as I did before. I'm not entirely sure that I'm happy with that, at least from a sound perspective. But maybe a little bit of the offset would go a little a long way. So like maybe there I would be happy with it in this kind of theoretical patch that we're kind of messing around with here. Okay, so that's kind of the basic idea. Um, if you wanted to um, adjust any signal going into here, your maximum minimum selector, um, you can sort of precede it by an offset attenuator. Uh, now, obviously, with a five fold, you're going to have a lot more options. Every signal that you have going into your maximum minimum selector, you'll be able to adjust in this specific way. Uh, so, like, if I had this piping into another offset attenuator, and let's say our LFO going into another offset attenuator, I'd have tons of options for kind of tweaking and fine-tuning the patch. Now, let's actually add one more kind of wrinkle to this little patch. For the most part, all we're really listening to right now is the maximum output. Let's hear the minimum output mixed in with this because most of the time you'll probably be using both possibly maybe in some kind of creative panning way or something like that so i'm going to patch this down into our mixer down here which is actually just a bca with input number one and two there we go and so now we just have both signals going into that the maximum and the minimum outputs of our A172. And we can kind of adjust that uh, to get a nice little mix of what we like. So, you know, if we want just a little bit of the minimum out, we can do that. Maybe bring a little more of the maximum out and just kind of get it in that nice little place where we're kind of happy with that signal. Okay? Cool. Let's bring in a fourth um, player into this game. So let's take, let's try the A110 over here, standard VCO. And we're just going to take the pulse wave. And let's just hear what that would sound like going into input number four. Okay. 
very kind of gongy type sound. I'm going to change the octave on my A110. Okay. And overall, I'm finding this a little bit harsh. So let's process this as well. So we're going to go up into the top section over here. And I'm going to pipe it into the input of my comparator. There we go. And let's get this cable out of the way so it's not completely in your way. And then I'm going to take the output of my comparator, analog sum, and I'm going to bring it down into my A172. Now I should be able to exert a little bit of control over that BCO, the A110, going into input number four down here. So I can bring the offset up a little bit. Do that. Kind of tweak our patch. We can definitely see some activity over at our oscilloscope. Let's try the offset in the opposite direction to see if we get slightly different result. It went a little too far on my offset. Let's try something a little more subtle right there. Or maybe like right there. And so the idea here of what we're doing is just another way to kind of fine-tune the same results that you get out of the A172, just kind of in a little more controlled way. So there you have it. Processing with the A172 maximum minimum selector. Um, now this was kind of a basic example of processing here, um, which we could have done a little bit more, uh, but maybe we'll hold that off uh, for future segments. Uh, or if you'd like to experiment with that and kind of give me some ideas as to what you would like to see, I'd be more, more than open to taking a look at those. Um, at any rate, that's going to kind of wrap up this last segment on the A172 um, and the series as a whole. So I want to thank you very much for watching and kind of keeping up to date if you have been watching the entire series. Um, Let's see, I'm not 100% sure what we're going to be doing uh, in the upcoming segments, uh, but I do kind of want to open up the uh, door, so to speak. If you have a suggestion for an upcoming video segment that you would like to see, or some kind of patching example or something like that, that, you would, uh, that you'd like to see in the Browse World of Sense videos, uh, please let me know. Get in touch with me via YouTube or however you feel that you can get in touch with me. Um, but... Yeah, thank you very much for watching this series. Uh, please stay tuned for the next video that I do. And uh, keep on patching out there.